What's up guys, Juicy Mercy here, and welcome to a brand new video. Today, we've got an episode of Top 5 Transfers of the Week. This is week number 12. We've got some very big names this episode, and it's pretty hard to actually choose a top five as that many quality deals, guys. So as always, if you smash 2,000 likes, that'd be greatly appreciated in the comments below. Let me think the best transfer of the week. Add me to my channel, class subscribe, and for daily fee for content. And as we always do, we're going to start with the honourable mentions. And first up, we're going to go with a new signing for the Premier League new boys at Watford. That is going to Diamante to the Italian. I think he's a former Italian international as well. He's actually gone on loan to him from Guangzhou Evergrande in the Chinese League. A very nice card back on FIFA 14, but I think he's actually going to be a bit downgraded there from then. And then we've got Rudiger, one of my favourite silver centre-backs. He's actually moved to Roma. So it's a loan deal for this season with a potential move of a permanent at the end. Uh, I think it's around 9 million euros. So it's not actually that expensive. And for someone that in real life has apparently got a lot of potential about him, that is not a bad fee whatsoever. And finally, we've got a big one for Leicester City. That is going to be Inla from Napoli. They managed to replace Cambiasso very well with the Swiss international from the Italian side. So first up, at number five today, we're going to be with a new Newcastle sign. That is going to be the French winner. Florian Tovan. It's taken me a while to get his name right, but I think that's correct. He actually signed from Marseille. He cost around 12.85 million pounds, and the other direction there went Remy Cabea on loan for this season. Remy Cabea uh, was bought from Montpellier, and he kind of flopped a little bit. I don't know if it's too harsh saying that or not, because he, he started off quite well, like a little bit of promising signs and stuff like that, um, but in general, didn't really uh, reach the potential everyone thought he would actually have. So he's 22 years old, Tovan, and uh, he's actually valued 8.4 mil. Last season for Marseille, played 38 games, getting 5 goals and 7 assists. So the reason that my number five this week then first up a lot of people on twitter have actually told me he's a very exciting player myself i don't watch much league on uh, so i haven't really seen much marseille action to be honest but uh, in his actual day before newcastle yesterday against manchester united away from home he actually showed a few good glimpses as soon as he got on the pitch actually the very first thing he'd done was make luke Shaw like they, they call the term breaking his ankles where he just falls over and he runs past him so he done very well on that front and uh, does some uh, more good stuff now he's on for 22 minutes so he wasn't on for long but he did seem pretty good like i mentioned though, a lot of people on twitter say he's got the ability to do very well in the Barclays Premier League. He's young. 22 years old is not old whatsoever. And it's actually a very good fee given uh, this day and age. I mean, 12 million pounds isn't that much for a winger. He was also linked to a few other clubs other than Newcastle and done very well to actually secure his services in general. So at number four this week, we're going with Alexandro making the move to Juventus. He left FC Porto just like Danilo did uh, previously in the summer to join Real Madrid. He left for 18.2 million pounds for the Italian champions. He's 24 years old. He's about at 14 mil and last season for Porto, 40 games, one goal and five assists. So it's Porto making even more money on their signings. They seem to sign players for a little bit amount. I think it cost them like six million pounds uh, like four years ago or something. They've made a lot of profit on him uh, just like they have with Danilo. But I mean, this guy, he's, he's got a lot about him. He actually impressed a lot uh, during the Champions League games also. And in terms of FIFA, this one's actually very good because it means we've got a uh, probably a rare goal left back that's actually very good in this Serie A. I know we've got uh, Evra this year, but Alexandro for me is at next level above. He's, he's Brazilian, gets a lot more better links and it means you can link up Pogba and kind of Neymar in one team easily. Again, 18 million pounds may seem like a lot but if you base it off young fullbacks price I know he's 24 but he's not quite the age of Luke Shaw and stuff like that but 18 million again in this day and age really doesn't seem like too much number three and we've got one of the best young centimeters in the world that is going to be Mateo Kovacic the uh, Croatian international he's joined Real Madrid and he's become a Galactico from Inter Milan he cost him 24.5 million pounds he's just 21 years old and he's valued at 15.4 so last season for Inter Milan he played 44 games getting eight goals and five assists from that centre midfield row again this guy's linked with so so many clubs before actually making the move to Real Madrid and it was kind of a surprise one as well I, I think I, I heard the rumour on the day before that it happened and the day after it was all official a lot of people including myself seem to be wondering how he's actually getting to uh, Real Madrid's set up in midfield but like, currently they've got the likes of James Rodriguez uh, Tony Cruz and also Luka Modric with Isco struggling himself to get into that midfield so Kovacic may have to wait his turn but hopefully does get it uh, sooner rather than later really and for FIFA again it's a perfect link to Luka Modric also another strong link to the likes of uh, even Rakitic and also Helenovic who's actually now on loan from Barca so at number two this week, we're going to go with, this was quite hard by the way, he could have easily been number one. That is going to Nicolas Otamendi making the move to Manchester City. So he made the switch from Valencia, the Spanish Giants, to join Manchester City for £31.2 million. And uh, I think it's actually 32 mil that most sites are reporting. He's 27 years old and nowadays that is not old for a centre-back. Uh, centre-backs tend to go to like 33 or 34 at least. I mean, back in the day, that might be uh, considered like peak kind of thing. But I mean, now they're all athletes and they're definitely uh, getting better with age. He's valued at £17.5 million. Pounds. The last season, 38 games, six goals and zero assists but then again he's not there to get goals or assists he's there to get the clean sheets which he definitely helped Valencia get last season so again he easily could be number one the reason for me putting him in number two is that I think City uh, needed a centre back less than the number one needed their position I'll get into detail when we get to number one um, but he's a great signing and I think it'd be an absolute like a, a great deal for Man City and I think their fans will absolutely love him also I forgot to mention Man City have a lot of depth in this position the likes of uh, Vincent Company and Mangala their current pairing at the back uh, they actually they've had a really good partnership together 
and I think it's kind of a shame that uh, Mangala will probably dropped for Otamendi. On top of them three, they've also got the likes of Di Macias and also the youngster Jason Denea. But I mean, again, I kind of feel sorry for Mangala, but Man City, the one thing that they'll probably be very happy about is Man United will link with him for so, so long and he managed to beat their rivals to his signature. And again, it's very good for FIFA Ultimate Team. He's a pacey centre-back and uh, he had a quality season last year. So I expect a big upgrade. And it'll be a nice, nice link to the likes of uh, Rojo at Manchester United and also, of course, uh, Vincent Company. Right, at number one, we're going to go with Pedro Rodriguez of Chelsea. Now, he left Barcelona for £21 million, which was his uh, release clause initially. He's 28 years old. He's valued at £14 million. And last season for Barca, mainly off the bench, by the way, uh, 50 games, 11 goals and 9 assists. He actually made his debut today for Chelsea against West Brom away, where they won 3-2. He got a goal and assist with like 35 minutes or something like that and uh, he played very well he impressed a lot of people in his debut and he seemed to fit straight in again though back onto my point of why Otamendi was number two and Pedro number one I personally think that Chelsea needed an upgrade in their winger uh, their right winger in particular more than Man City needed an upgrade on their centre backs he's linked to Manchester United and again 21 million is a very good fee for a very much pre-run player at the highest possible level with Barcelona he scored in the Champions League and um, obviously won multiple La Ligas and won multiple Champions Leagues and that experience alone is probably worth 21 mil on itself he brings something different to the team uh, that Quadrado's actually struggled. Quadrado doesn't really like get that team whatsoever. And it's like Quadrado actually could get in there next week's episode along with Kevin De Bruyne potentially going to Man City. But it looks like Quadrado could be off to Juventus on loan. And uh, also William. William's a very good player, but extremely good work rate. But Pedro, he has goals and everything in his uh, game. Right, guys, that's going to be my top five transfers of the week. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button. 2,000 likes would be greatly appreciated. In the comments below, let me think it's the best transfer of this week. And if you to my channel, click the subscribe button for daily FIFA content, guys. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time.